Islam and these five pillars are what you have to adhere to in order to be able to call yourself a Muslim. So what we're going to be talking about today is Shahada. So the first pillar of Islam. So the Shahada is a declaration of faith that every Muslim needs to take. It is the declaration that you believe that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's only one God and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the declaration of faith. There's a way in which you say it in Arabic in order to declare that you are a Muslim. But what a lot of people fail to realize is that there are actually conditions of shahada. And it's more than just saying that you declare that there's one God and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a messenger of God. So this video is dedicated to explaining what more actually does go into the shahada because it's been watered down so much within modern society that it's literally thought to be just a statement that you say once in your lifetime and that's it like you have fulfilled the first condition of being a Muslim but that's just not the truth and so I'm going to share with you guys the conditions of Shahada so there are nine conditions of Shahada and I'm just going to quickly summarize each point please don't just watch this one video and think that you know exactly what Shahada means because truthfully this is a topic that needs to be studied fully in depth in order to really understand what the shahada means. I'm just giving you a very summarized version of the conditions of shahada. So the first condition is knowledge. You have to have knowledge about what you're reciting. So you have to know what it means to say the shahada in Arabic and you also have to have knowledge about what the shahada actually means. What it means to say that you believe only in one God. What it means to say that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is your messenger. What does that actually mean? The shahada is literally a testimony and when someone testifies for something they have to have knowledge about what the thing that they're testifying is. So you have to have knowledge backing your shahada in order for your shahada to be really valid. The second condition is certainty. So you have to have certainty in your heart that what you're testifying is what you truly believe. You have to have full faith that what you're saying is the truth. You can't just half believe it, you can't just quarter believe it, you can't just say, yeah, I believe in this, but kind of like, I don't know, this one thing in Islam throws me off and I don't really believe that. You have to wholly and completely believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one true God, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messenger, and everything that goes along with it, our hearts should not waver at all when we testify that there is only one God. Our hearts should not waver at all when we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of God. So part of our shahada is believing with certainty that what we're saying is the truth. The next thing is acceptance. So you have to accept 100% everything that comes along with believing in the shahada. Everything that comes along with being a Muslim, you have to accept. You have to accept that there is an obligation to pray five times a day. You have to accept that there are some things in Islam that you might not like, but you have to accept that that's part of Islam and that you should be following those things. So part of Islam is accepting not only with our hearts but also with our actions. Acceptance is not just believing in your heart that there is one God. Acceptance is also acting upon that. A lot of people refuse to accept certain things in Islam because of their pride, because of their ego, because it doesn't fit with their personal lifestyle. But part of taking the shahada is accepting everything that comes along with it. Even if it's such a small thing, you have to accept that this is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to try your best to act upon that thing. That is part of your shahada. So whatever comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his messenger, a Muslim accepts as the truth. The next one is submission and compliance. So you need to fully submit to Allah's will. This refers to the actual physical enactments of our deeds. So the physical things in which we do that are acts of submission. So one of the conditions of your shahada in order for your shahada to be full and complete is that you submit to the acts that are deemed upon you. So you submit to wearing hijab, you submit to not plucking your eyebrows, you submit to not wearing makeup, you submit to praying five times a day, you submit to all of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you to do and all of the things that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has told you to do and if you aren't able to physically submit at that time then you accept that yes 
this is still the truth this is what i should still be doing and you try your hardest to be able to submit because your shahada is lacking if you are not to the best of your abilities submitting to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you to do because that is a condition of your shahada the next condition is truthfulness so this means that when you say the shahada, you say it truthfully, you say it honestly, you say it with full belief in your heart, you don't say it because society expects you to say it, you don't say it because your parents want you to say it, you don't say it because it's the new trend right now to be a Muslim, you don't say it because of anything or anyone else except that you truthfully believe in Islam and you're not lying when it comes to your testimony of faith. So this is evidence that the shahada is something that you have to do when you're ready to do it. When you're really there and you can truthfully say that you believe the words that you're saying. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows if you believe it or you don't believe it. But part of your shahada is truthfully believing the words in which you say. The next condition is sincerity. This ties into the last one. You have to have sincerity in what you're saying. You have to do this for the sake of Allah, not for any other reason, not because your parents told you to, not because it's expected of you, not because it's a new trend like I just mentioned. You have to do it with genuine sincerity and genuine faith and genuine belief that what you're saying is the truth and what you're saying is what you believe and you're doing it for the sake of Allah. And this also ties in not just with your actual declaration but also with all your actions that come after it. All of your acts should be for the sake of Allah. All of your acts should have this sincerity behind it. All of your acts should have this genuine nature behind it. That you're praying five times a day, not because it's expected of you by your parents, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to and you're doing it for the sake of Allah. You're helping the poor, not because you're going to look great in people's eyes, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you to and you're doing it for the sake of Allah. This is especially important for people that grew up in Muslim families because I really do believe that everyone chooses Islam for themselves at one point in life. A lot of people think like reverts are so great, like they came to Islam on their own, but really everyone comes to Islam on their own. Everyone at some point in their life, if they're an adult and they're practicing Islam and no one's forcing them to do it, they're doing that because they genuinely believe it because they came to Islam on their own. So for people that were raised with Islam, this is something that is important also for you to reflect on, that there is genuine sincerity behind your actions and you're not doing it for anybody else. You're doing it for you because you believe in this religion and because you know that it's the truth. So if you're fulfilling that, then that means that you have sincerity in the shahada, which means you have another part of your declaration of faith that is now ticked off. The eighth one is denial of false worship. So this means not only that you are forbidding idol worshipping, that you are forbidding those that worship other than Allah, that you are forbidding those who have multiple gods, that you are forbidding the evil of putting someone to Allah. But this also means that for yourself, you are making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your number one priority. You are putting him above everything else in your life you're putting him above your job you're putting him above your kids you're putting him above your family you're putting him ab above your social life you're putting him above everything else an evidence that you do put Allah above everything else and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is truly the one that you worship and that you are forbidding false gods is that you will not put anything in his place and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the center of your world and an evidence that you are doing this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the center of your world is that your actions will reflect that you will make it a priority to pray five times a day even if that does mean praying at an airport praying in the middle of the street praying at work in a closet wherever it is you will make it a priority to pray you'll make it a priority to give to charity you'll make it a priority to fast in ramadan you will make it a priority to adhere to the obligations that you have as a muslim no matter how hard it might be so this condition of denying any false worship goes so much deeper than just idol worshipping. It goes all the way deep into the conditions of your heart and the person that you are and reflecting on your day-to-day -day actions and whether they help you fulfill that command of the shahada. And the ninth and final condition of your shahada is adherence. Adherence is stating that you believe in the shahada, that you believe that there is only one God and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger of God and then adhering to that until death. 
practicing Islam until death, committing good deeds for the sake of Allah until death. All eight conditions that I just spoke about, adhering to all of those until death. And inshallah, if you do do this, and if you do adhere, and if you do constantly, constantly check yourself, reflect, really evaluate whether you are fulfilling the conditions of shahada, then inshallah, you will have an easy death, and inshallah, you will have a fulfilling afterlife where you feel so content and so happy, and you will see the reward of your struggle to adhere to the conditions of shahada, inshallah. So those are the conditions of Shahada. Again, you guys, please research this more in depth because I promise you, you could sit here and learn about this for hours and hours and hours and still barely scrape the tip of the iceberg. It's so much more than just having a declaration and just going on with your life. It is something to live by and something to die by. And I wish that more people knew and took that seriously. So that's the reason that I wanted to include this in this revert series because I really want you to have a good, solid,